Islam. I'm Dr. Aleem Bey, Grand Sheikh of the Moorish Holy Temple of Science of the World. And today we're going to share with you some powerful information that you might not have known that there are several said black or more presidents that existed prior to George Washington as well as after George Washington and so we're going to get into that information right now. We have here the Peace and Friendship Treaty of the United States and Morocco. Morocco was the first country to recognize the United States as an actual nation. Um, this is the first page of the Moroccan Treaty of 1787. Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin um, worked closely with the Moors in the Continental Congress to secure this treaty. In the Bovang collection, there are over 200 letters to the Bay of Morocco from the Continental Congress. There were many Moors in the Continental Congress working with the European Masons originally taught by Moors to form a Novos Ordo Seclerum, meaning a new secular order of the ages, in which that we refer to now as the New World Order. E plum unum, out of many people and nations, one. The Moroccan Treaty is a very powerful because according to the Constitution, the Constitution itself, its laws, and the treaties are the supreme law of the land. This treaty specifically deals with morals and the question that may rise, how do we know that where the treaty say morals? Well, that so-called black people of that time is being referred to. Well, if you read the treaty, um, this goes without saying is that you would see that at that time period, blacks were referred to as Moors. You can go back and watch several movies. One in particular was The Black Knight with Martin Lawrence, Lawrence in which that he was referred to as a Moor basically throughout the whole film. And this goes into the Continental Congress presidents. The first Continental Congress met in Philadelphia on September the 5th, 1774. The second Continental Congress, which assembled in Philadelphia on May 10th, 1775. Now, the Articles of Association was put together during 1774. So, the first president of the Continental Congress was Peyton Randolph. Second was Henry Middleton. Third was Peyton Randolph again. Fourth was John Hancock, as in put your John Hancock here on this dotted line. Then by the time of the Declaration of Independence, which was signed July the 4th, 1776, up under the Continental Congress. And there was other Congresses that was held. One was held in Baltimore, Maryland, 1776 through 1777. Philadelphia in 1777. Lancaster, PA in 1777. Um, York, Pennsylvania in 1777 through 1778 and Philadelphia 1778 and 1781. Now you have to realize is that Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, was the first capital before they moved um, between Maryland and Virginia to form the District of Columbia, Washington DC. Philadelphia was the first capital. So this is during the time when the Continental Congress was formed, that Philadelphia was the first capital. 
fifth president under the um, Continental Congress is Henry Lawrence. Next is John Jay. Next is Samuel Hunterton. All right. Eighth is Thomas McKinney. So, if you want to know more information, you can go to www.johnhanson.net and it tells you about the Articles of Confederation. Also, according to the Moors, Benjamin Banneker is one of the two Moors of said blacks on the back of the $2 bill. The other one is actually the first president of the United States, John Hanson, under the Article of Confederation. Now, if you go and count, now I have the picture, and you count 13 over from John Hansen, you will have Benjamin Banneker, who is also known as Ben Bay Emmanuel Muali, who is also Prince Hall in history. And so there are the two said blacks on the back of the two dollar bill. So according to some esoteric historians, it cites that there was 56 signers of the Declaration of Independence and at least 46 of them were Freemasons and all Rosicrucians. All right, 20 of them um, also fell up under that same category. All right, um, in some shape, form, or fashion. So in the year of 1776, of during the signing of the Declaration of Independence, George Washington was not president. George Washington did not become president until 1789. And thus, we have to ask, who was president for those 13 years? Well, we gave you the presidents up under the Continental Congress. However, from 1776, during the signing of the Declaration of Independence, which is also one of the constitutions, you have four constitutions for those that do not know. You have the Articles of Association, you have the Articles of Confederation, and you also have the Declaration of Independence, as well as the Constitution for the United States of America and its Bill of Rights. Those are the four constitutions. Now, Articles of Confederate Presidents or Confederation Presidents, um, we have, um, if you get the book, Masonic Membership of the Founding Fathers, it goes into details in which that states that um, there definitely was Masonic connections in the establishment of the United States of America as well as Rosicrucian connections. You also have the President under the Articles of Confederation, the first, according to most historians, is John Hanson. All right. Second is Elias Boateno. Third is Thomas McFlynn. Fourth is Richard Henry Lee. Fifth is John Hancock. Sixth is Nathaniel Gorham. Seventh is Arthur St. Clair. Eight is Cyrus Griffin. Now these was all presidents under the Articles of Association, under the Articles of Confederation, and under the Declaration of Independence. George Washington becomes the first president under the Constitution for the United States of America. This is a picture of John Hanson, one of the pictures. All right. Here you can clearly see 
um, say to black teachers is another picture of John Hansen, as they say. This one here shows him with um, sort of an afro. And this is taken from the second video, um, Britannia. This is a set picture of John Hansen, um, which a lot of confusion on the internet has gone about this picture. I won't get too much into it here, but um, he is supposed to be an ambassador of some sort to Libya, all right? And not the John Hansen during the time period in which that we are referring to, unlike the last two pictures in which that we showed are supposedly be some type of um, drawings and paintings of John Hansen around that time period. Now, George Washington referred to the presidential election of John Hansen by writing, I congratulate you, Your Excellency, on your appointment to fill the most important seat in the United States. This is what George Washington, who was a general at the time, wrote to John Hansen. So this letter is still, um, still remains and it is in the Library of Congress. Now, interestingly, there was no states at that time period because the first state was Delaware, which was ratified on December the 7th, 1787. So this came during the time when the United States was recognized by Morocco that it began to establish it, its states. Prior to that, these were territories. Um, in 1781, the Articles of Confederation, although established a league of the 13 states rather than a strong central government, provided for the continuancy of Congress, known thereafter as the Congress of the Confederation. It held sessions in Philadelphia, 1781 through 1783, Princeton, New Jersey, 1783, Annapolis, um, Maryland, 1783-1784, and Trenton, New Jersey, 1784. So five sessions was held in New York City between the years of 1785 and 1789. The Articles of Confederation only allowed a president to serve a one-year term any three-year period. So this was the difference during the time of the Articles of Confederation presidents and the Constitution for the United States of American presidents. One year term, four year terms. Now, the Continental Congress, um, the reason why there is a illustration of, from the Associate, Articles of Association and Articles of Confederation, is because Actually, there was two governments at that particular time period. This is why you look on the back of your dollar bill. There's two seals. One with a pyramid and an eye, and the other one of an eagle or phoenix. All right? But there was two governments in North America. Uh, one was the Moorish federal government, and the other one was the European state government. Um, this fact can be observed on the back of the dollar bill or the Federal Reserve note. Um, there were two national seats on the back of the one dollar bill. Um, a pyramid, as I said, and an eagle on the other. Um, the pyramid represents the Moorish federal government, and the eagle represents the European colonies. There were 13 states based on the 13 Lani Lenape tribes called the Fire Clans. Um, these 13 tribes were patterned after the 13 clan mothers of the matriarchal government. The Iroquois finally succeeded in overthrowing our government by tricking us into accepting the role and position of the woman. Later, four of the six nations of the Iroquois themselves was conquered by an insidious plan put into action by the colonists and the, Brit and the British um, prior to the Revolutionary War. 
all right? The more stood in the center holding the great chain of friendships with the Europeans at one end and Indian nations on the other. They controlled the Delaware River, all right? Um, so it says the two nations can be seen in the preamble of the Constitution of the United States. And it reads, we the people of the United States in order to form a more perfect union. And this is where it comes in that from the Articles of Association, Articles of Confederation, as well as the Declaration of Independence to form a more perfect union with the establishment of the Constitution of the United States of America. All right. To what establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. So as you see, the preamble of the Constitution of the United States of America speak of two governments, the United States and the United States of America, to form a more perfect union. All right? So, um, now, some debate if John Hansen, who I showed you earlier, was at the Independence Hall during the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Some say that he was, some say that it wasn't. However, they do speak of a mysterious man showing up, almost miraculously, who supposedly put forth a speech. And I'm going to show you the speech in a second. But this is the back of the $2 bill. And you'll see here, John Hansen to the left, who was the first president under the Articles of Confederation. And you see here, Benjamin Banneker. All right? So, um, amazingly, this picture is when you see another drawing or another painting of this same signing of the Declaration of Independence, for whatever reason, you do not see these two men in the photo or on the um, or in the painting, I should say, or in the drawing. However, on the back of the two dollar bill, they are there. So we know that there are certain historical facts and truths that we have to go in uncode and decode. And as a matter of fact, my wife and I went to the United Grand Lodge of England about four years ago now, and the curator of the museum asked us the question about how do we feel about the possibilities of, our first, of your first black president? This was November the 3rd. The election was November 4th, the next day. So, as we looked to each other, and I looked at my wife, she already came and stated, well, I thought there was more than nine presidents before um, Obama. In other words, he wouldn't be the first black president. I thought there was others prior to him. Well, the curator jumped back and said, who told you that? You're not supposed to know that. Did they tell you that? Who's the they that told us that? That's what he was wondering. <laughs> and of course, since we was at the largest Masonic Hall, uh, one of the most largest Masonic Halls in the world, um, I could think of nothing else than he was, must have been referring to his Masonic brothers here in the United States. You know? And he was asking, did they tell us? Because these are secrets in which they are not very well known. And you will find books with this information. As you see here, I found the information. And you may find books with it. However, all pieced together in the way in which that we're doing it today, you will not find it. However, John Hansen, who, we, who was speculated to have been at the hall, or maybe not, on Declaration of Independence signing, I say he was because these are the words that is said to be spoken by John Hansen on July the 4th, 1776, in which that he speaks about, they may stretch our necks on a giblet in the land. They may turn every rock into a scaffold, every tree into a gallow, every home into a grave, 
and yet the words on the parchment can never die. I may pour, they may pour out our blood on a thousand scaffolds, and yet from every drop that dies, the axe, a new champion of freedom, will spring into birth. The British king may blot out our stars of Kadesh Meteor, which is the great spirit. So here, John Hansen is referring to the great spirit in another language, in a Native American language, as a matter of fact, the language of the Lenape. Okay, so um, he goes on from the sky, but he cannot blot out his words written on the parchment there. The works of Kenach, my tool, may perish. His words never. The words of this declaration will live in the world long after our bones are dust. To the mechanics in his workshop, they will speak hope. To the slave in the mines, freedom. But the coward kings, these words will speak in tones of warning. They cannot choose but he. So, um, this is what he was saying in order to get them to sign. And as you've seen, John Hancock was one of the presidents during the Continental Congress, and he was the, also the first to put his signature on the Declaration of Independence. So hence, this is where the terms comes as, put your John Hancock right here. All right, here we have the Journal of the House of Representatives, 1789 through 1790. And it specifically speaks that this above is a petition from a small party of free Moors, who was known as the free blacks during that time period in 1790, to avoid the status of Negro, and that in the case they shall commit any fault, that they are tried as citizens of the United States and not under the Negro Act. So, this was the separation in which that we told you in the last episode that Alex Haley was trying to convey to you during the movie Roots that came out in 17, 1977. This is another good book in order for you to see these moors. This is called The Five Negro Presidents by J. Rogers, historian. J. Rogers' theories about race, sex, and color can be found in the books Nature Knows No Color Line, World Great Men of Color, and the pamphlet Five Negro Presidents, all of which deals with the ideas of race, color, sex, and color. In the latter, he provides what he say was evidence that there, were, that there had been 19th and 20th century presidents of the United States who have partial black ancestry.